This week I'm sharing how to use glazing as a base for adding colour to an art journal page and how to build up layers and focus around a tinted gel and paint background. So let me show you how you can add these techniques into your creative projects this week. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more art and craft, inspiration, techniques, tips and tricks every week. If you saw last week's art and craft hacks video, then you will have spotted where this page actually started. I like to repurpose packaging wherever I can and metal pie tins make very handy mixing trays for paints and gels, once you've eaten all the pies of course. So I'm using some acrylic ink to tint some regular gel gloss medium and you just need a drop or two to add colour to the gel. And if you find that you've added too much ink and the mixture becomes too liquidy, then just add some more gel. Next up I'm going to tint some white acrylic paint or if you prefer make a light tint of this lovely muted turquoise colour using white, whichever way round you want to think of it. And there was no reasoning behind picking these colours other than they were on my desk and I know they work well together. If you want to use them too then as always I've listed all the products that I've used in this video in the description below. Once I've given that a quick mix through the tinted gel and paints are ready for use and I'm going to use them in one of my DIY stencils. Now if you want to see how I've made this stencil I do have a blog post about it and you can visit it through the cards, I'll put a link in the cards and in the description below. I'm not being particularly careful about how I apply this paint and the tinted gel through the stencil, I'm just going to mix them up together and put a little bit of texture down on this page. You're going to want to let the gel and the paint dry completely before you move on to the next layer. And for my next layer I'm going to add some old book page texture and I've kind of decided to go on imposing corners of that stencil texture. We've already got a kind of rough rectangle going on here so I think I'm just going to go with that rough rectangle look. So I'm going to use my gel medium again just to stick down some scraps of old book page into top left hand and the bottom right hand corner next to the stenciling. And then again let that dry completely before moving on to the next layer. I'm going to set up my glaze now ready for the next layer and for this I'm using a glazing medium which is a medium that dries clear, it extends the working time of the acrylic paint so it takes longer to dry and it increases its flow. And the idea here is the glaze will add a translucent colour layer over the stenciling and the book page texture. And I decided to go for a dark neutral colour with the raw umber. You only really need a very small amount of the paint to tint the glazing liquid and you can add more of each if you need to. So try the mixture out on spare paper first to see if you have the intensity and the flow you need. And a top tip here, it's very easy to drip this medium all over the bottle so make sure that you clean off the threads for the bottle and the lid otherwise you might get the lid stuck fast if the medium's on there and it's been allowed to dry with the lid on. To apply the glaze I'm just going to use a flat brush, it's about three quarters of an inch or you could use a, a wider one, doesn't really matter. I'm just looking to get some good coverage and then I'm just going to use the tiniest amount of water just to help knock back the glaze as I wipe it off the embossed areas of that stencil texture. You can use glazes in different ways, they are commonly used in later stages of paintings to shift paint colour, to add depth to paintings but I've actually used my glaze as a way to bring these three areas of texture together and as a base for adding more colour as you'll see in a minute. Oh and my regular viewers, have you noticed that I'm not in my junk journal this week? No, this week I'm using a mixed media spiral bound journal from Strathmore. I usually have a few different journals on the go at the same time and from the comments I've been getting it sounds like many of you do too. So what papers and journals to use are a hot topic and something that I get a lot of questions about so I am planning to do a video about it. But in the meantime I think it'd be great for the community if we all share what our favourite papers are and journals too. So do leave a comment below, let us know what you're currently using and I know that other watchers will find that really useful as well. So that last layer is mostly dry and I'm just mixing yellow, red and raw sienna to make a kind of nice rusty colour because I just want to lift the colour a little bit of this page. We've got a nice distressed look going on here so I think a like rusty colour will really add to it and it's a great counterpoint to that lovely light blue and sea green that's there as well. 
and I didn't think much about it at the time but now I'm sort of looking back and doing the voiceover there's very much an autumn feel to this journal page. I didn't set out to make an autumn feel journal page but it is autumn and it's kind of just happened. This time I'm using a piece of kitchen towel to apply the paint and it's a case of picking a little bit of paint off of my palette, rubbing it over the surface and then occasionally using some water to knock it down a little bit, knock it back. And I just keep working like this until I get the kind of coverage that I'm looking for. And I don't want to completely cover up that raw umber layer. So I still want that colour and that texture to peek through. But this nice, uneven, rusty coloured layer is just going to add another level to this page. I have a small obsession with stationery. Okay, so not so small if I'm honest. And I love grid paper or notebooks with squared paper. I mean, is that odd? I'm no longer sure. But anyway, I thought a panel of square paper would make a nice frame for my focal point. And as this paper is low weight, so it's quite thin, once the medium has dried, you'll be able to make out the texture of the stenciling underneath it. I'm also purposely trying to add in crinkles and that will just add some more depth to it so that it looks part of the piece, which already has that light, distressed feel to it. For my focal point, my initial thought was to have three drawn leaves and have them grouped in a cluster over that squared paper panel. So I drew out three long stemmed leaves using a black brush pen and I'm using the same paper from the same journal for those leaves. I then cut them out just to make it easier to tear a border around each leaf as I wanted that rough edge to them. I wanted the leaf colour to harmonise with the colours in the stencil texture so chose pencils as close as I could to those colours and it was around about this time when I was colouring in that leaf that I started to wonder if a single leaf would make a better focal point. So then I just spent a little bit of time playing around with the three leaves, seeing how they looked together or singly, the coloured one versus the uncoloured ones and I decided that I preferred the single coloured leaf as my focal point. But the square paper panel, it kind of still looked like it needed some more texture, so I added some lettering. And because I couldn't think of what else to put behind it, I just put a repeat of leaf, leaves, leave and left to sit behind that leaf stem. If we look close up, we can really see all of that great texture. So has this given you some ideas and inspiration for your next project? If you want more art and craft inspiration techniques, tips and tricks, then click that round icon to subscribe to my channel. All of your comments, likes and shares are hugely appreciated. Plus, don't forget to link me in on social media to your makes inspired by my videos, as I love, love, love to see them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.